Hi, and welcome back. So this is the final video on SQLite. I'm kind of sad that the course is coming to an end because I've really enjoyed making these videos. But on the other hand, I really just wanted to make kind of a short introduction to SQLite and writing SQL commands, because I think many people will kind of benefit from this rather than having, say, a 10 hour course or a full university course on databases. In the last video, we're going to talk about joins. Joins are a way to combine information from different tables. So, so far in the series, we've just looked at a single table in a database. And if a database only had a single table, then it would kind of just be semi-useful. But the real power of databases actually comes from having multiple tables and how to combine them, how to create relationships between them, and how to utilize these relationships and combinations to get really cool insights. So as always, let's head into the code and see how this works in practice. Here we have the code that you're now pretty familiar with. We have our songs list here. I've actually removed some of them. So I'm only left with two Bruce Springsteen songs, one Rick Astley and one Whitney Houston song. And the rest of the code should be familiar with setting up connections and cursors. And we're actually now just creating this table. And a way to introduce joins that I think makes sense is first of all to understand why do we need more than one table for one concept? So here we have songs from the 80s. Isn't that really everything we need? And one way to see that you might want to split up your information into different tables is in our case to think about the birth year of the performer. One thing I could do is simply to insert here the birth year of the performer. So I think that's 1963 for Whitney Houston. And that's fine. And I think for Rick Astley, that's 1966. So far, so good. But when we come to Bruce Springsteen, that's 1949. And the problem isn't that it's uh, quite a low number. The problem is that I need to insert this two places because Bruce Springsteen has both of these songs. And that means that this data has become redundant. I've kind of duplicated the data to places, and that's not really great. The reason this is not really great is that it's often a recipe for introducing mistakes. But now if someone edits this number, then that's fine, but that doesn't really affect this data at all. And then you might end up in a situation where these numbers are actually different, even though they should be the same. I don't think in this particular instance that people would alter the birth year perhaps of an artist, but in many other cases, whether the data represents say an address or an email or a phone number or bank receipts and so on, it's very common to alter the information. And then if the data is duplicated like this, you're quick to introduce errors because you update it one place, but forget to update it in the other place. And in addition to kind of the duplication problem, it's also not very nice memory wise. I mean, we're kind of duplicating the same number twice, even though we only need the information once. Here we're saying that Bruce Springsteen is born in 1949. Here we're saying that Bruce Springsteen is born in 1949. It doesn't really give us anything new, right? So how can we solve this? Well, what we can do is actually to create a new table called artists. And this table can now consists of three rows so far. And these rows are now the artist name. So let's take Whitney Houston first. And then we can steal her birth year. That's 1963. And then we can just remove this. So far, so good. Then I do the same for Bruce Springsteen. That was 1949. Let me just grab that. And now I can remove that as well for both of these columns. And finally, we had Rick Astley. And that's 1966. Now we have two tables. And now it now might seem like, well, this is a lot more information than the one we had here. We introduced basically four new numbers, but now we have three new numbers and three new strings. But the thing is that this is a lot more manageable because now in a realistic application, Bruce Springsteen doesn't just have two songs. He probably has 30 songs from the 80s. We don't need more information than this. We said that Bruce Springsteen is born in 1949. So now we've separated kind of the information into two tables and that's kind of great. Then we need to duplicate some of this to create the other table. So I want to insert the artists into, let me just call it artists database. So I want to call the table artists and the columns is the name of the artist and there is also the birth year. And then of course I insert the artists into the table. Good. Saving and running. I got an error and the error here is actually super useful. This is regarding this statement here. And it says that, yeah, the statement uses five kind of columns, but you have supplied six sometimes. 
That's simply because I forgot to erase the year here, Rick Astley. Errors are typically good because they help us be better. And now if I run it again, I get a new error. I can see that I have a table called artist that has two columns, but five values were supplied. And that's simply because I have five question marks here. Let's save that, save it again, and now it looks good. So now we have two tables, both the artist table and the songs table. And I think you understand that kind of separating some information into different tables might be useful. But that raises a big, big problem. And that is simply, oh no, I've separated information. How can I now combine them again? Because even though I want them separated in the database, I want to sometimes get information from both of the tables. Say that I want to retrieve Dancing in the Dark, and I also want to retrieve Bruce Springsteen, and I also want to retrieve the birth year of Bruce Springsteen. In this table, I don't have the birth year, but in this table, I don't have the song name. How do I do that? And that is precisely what we do with the join. So as usual, we make our selection. And here, let me just fetch one because it will only be one row. So what we're going to do is to create a select statement. We're going to create a from statement. And then we're also going to use a join statement. So from is a kind of primary table we're selecting from. And that's songs from the 80s. But then I want to join the songs from the 80s table with the artists table. So I write join artists. But just saying join on artists, that's not really enough because it's still ambiguous what I want to kind of join on. So intuitively, I think we understand that Dancing in the Dark and then Bruce Springsteen should of course correspond to Bruce Springsteen and then 1949. If you were trying to boil down what we're thinking, then we're thinking that the artist column of the songs from the 80s should correspond to the name column from the artists column. So we simply need to write that out. So we have an on keyword here, and then we just need to specify basically what I said. So we can do songs from the 80s, then we can use a dot, and then we can highlight a column. And here we have what the artist, this should be equal to the artist table with a name column. So again, this is precisely what I tried to kind of clumsily say previously, we look into song from the 80s and pick the artist and that artist should be the same as within the artists table going after the name. So before doing anything else, let's actually just select everything. And maybe I'll do fetch all after all here. So let's just call this combined tables and the selection. And here we have it. Now I have I Want to Dance with Somebody, Whitney Houston from the Whitney album, 1987, it's this duration. Again, Whitney Houston, because now we're kind of over in the artists table, but we're just bringing everything along. And then the birth year of Whitney Houston. And same for the next one. We have Dancing in the Dark, Bruce Springsteen, Born in the USA album, 1984, 241 seconds. Again, now we're over in the artist table, is Bruce Springsteen, and it is 1949. If I want to keep my promise of only selecting this dancing in the dark column that I can do within the select statement, but now it is super important to be specific about which table we're selecting from. And the reason from this should be clear. What if I just write name? Well, it could be the name of the song, right? From songs from the 80s, but it could also be the name of the artist. So this doesn't do right. It's not clear what I actually want. So here I need to specify songs from the 80s dot name. That's saying, yeah, I want to go into this table and pick that column. Then I want to pick the artist that I can actually pick from either songs from the 80s.artist or artist.name, since this is kind of joined together and should represent the same. Let me just pick this. And then I wanted to go into the artists table and pick the birth year. Saving and running this, that gives me, I want to dance with somebody, Whitney Houston, and then the birth year of Whitney Houston. So now we've combined the two tables. And then of course, if I just want the single song, I can just go and make a condition saying that this, yeah, this thing should be equal to dancing in the dark. And this gives me a single row with dancing in the dark, 
Bruce Springsteen and then the birth year of Bruce Springsteen. So the kind of main thing you need to remember about the join is that splitting a database or data up into different tables have some really big advantages that become just clearer and clearer the bigger your tables and the more information you have. So I agree that here it kind of is kind of arbitrary if you have this in one table or in two, but as your data grows and you get millions or even billions of rows, then having everything in the same table will give you a lot of redundancy and introduce errors. But but you can split them up into multiple tables. But then the intuitive disadvantage is that then you're splitting the data up so that you cannot combine it anymore, but you can. And that's what you're doing with the join statement. And before ending this series, I want to mention that there are different types of... So this is actually called an inner join in SQL. So I think in SQLite, if I write inner join, or just join, that gives me precisely the same. But there are also outer joins and cross joins and other types of joins that you can use in SQL. They do slightly different things. And I just want to encourage you to look that up yourself if you need a different variants of joining. But I think just a classical inner join or what people typically just call join is a great place to start. So that's it for this video and actually for this series. I hope this gave you some insight and peek into SQL, SQLite, and also interaction with Python and how kind of both simple and complicated this can be at the same time. So I've only scratched the surface of what you can do with SQL here. There's so much more to learn than this, but I think these topics are a good introduction and then you can learn more as you progress in your career or in your hobby or whatever you want to use this for. In any case, thank you so much for following and have a great day.